Uh, welcome to Profi Plays. I'm Profi, and in this video, I want to talk about a, a solo RPG tool called the Solitary GM. Uh, it's a little bit different than many of the tools you might see, so I thought it would be good to introduce it to people. Um, so if you want to give it a look, you can. That's a pay what you want. Uh, pay structure, I guess, uh, on DriveThruRPG, so I will include that link in the description uh, below. So let's get to it. Uh, so first I want to talk a little bit about some kind of philosophy of what solo RPG is, uh, and I think that will provide the context we need to really understand what the Solitary GM is trying to do. So we can then introduce the Solitary GM and then share some of my thoughts on the Solitary GM as a tool for solo role-playing. So, there are lots of different ways of thinking about what soloists are doing right when we are solo role playing uh, so one way of approaching it is to start with as our basis thinking about what social role playing is like how that works and then modify that to look at what soloists are doing right so in a social role playing game there are really three main elements that matter Right. First would be the players, each of whom controls their player character. Then you have the game master controlling the world and the non-player characters. And then finally you have the system, which provides some level of randomness uh, and adjudication for some of the interactions that are going to be happening between the players, the world, the players, the NPCs. And so we have all of these three elements together. So what happens then when you move from social role-playing to solo role-playing is that you have where you would have had multiple PCs and multiple players, and you'd have the GM as a separate person, where we're going to be involving typically at least three people, often more than that. Now all of this is compressed down into one person. So the question is, how do we do that? Right. So a, what a lot of tools try to do is take the GM role and remove it right from a human being and put it into some kind of automated randomized system or at least pieces of it into an automated randomized system. So then what you have, the soloist's job then is to control the single PC while then randomness takes over for the system and for the GM. Uh, I think that really like, a Mythic would be a good example of this where its goal is GM emulation. So you have, say, oracle tables that answer yes-no questions, right? There you have randomness taking the role of the GM. And then you also have kind of inspiration tables, uh, which then again are taking on the role of the GM on more complex questions. So what these tools then are going to do is combine some elements of logic right, with luck right, to provide the combination of coherence and surprise uh, that we, we might find in a solo role-playing game, though in a social role-playing game, but in a social role-playing game the, those elements of surprise simply come from the fact that we have different minds involved and not every mind works the same way. Right? So what the tools, tools do then is take the, fact, the presence of other minds and replaces them right, with dice. The solitary GM, though, is a little bit different in that rather than trying to emulate the role of the GM, so then the soloist takes primarily the role of a player, right, it's doing the opposite. It is primarily trying to emulate what players are doing, and then you as the soloist have primarily the role of the GM. Right, so how does the solitary GM do this? Right, so players right, are going to be a mix of three different player archetypes. Now there are six available, so each player then has three types. They have a, a primary, a secondary, and a tertiary type. Now some example of these archetypes would be things like the power gamer. Right, so the person who's always kind of aware of how the system works and is trying to use the elements of the system to their best advantage so they can win. Right? Or you might have the, the specialist ninja. Right, so this uh, person, this player type, would approach any situation thinking about how would a ninja approach this particular situation. So what the Solitary GM recommends you do then is that you have not just the player characters, we have players right underneath these characters, and it even recommends giving them separate names, very much like I don't have all of my PCs named after me, for example. Right, so you'd have each of the players right has their player types, and then whenever they make a decision, right, you roll some dice. And what those dice do is they randomize the chosen they randomize the type that is going to be making that particular choice so there's a higher chance that your primary 
and then your secondary and your tertiary types will be chosen. But then you have some of these other, like I said, it's a total of six types. Uh, some of the other ones may also possibly show up occasionally. It's, it's roughly a, a 1 in 12 chance that you're going to get something other than uh, one of your, your primary types, uh, or I guess each of those others. Right? So I guess it would be a total of like a quarter or something like that, uh, a chance there. And so most of the time we're going to find this primary, tertiary, and, and secondary, not in that order. Right? So it's going to be mostly be those three that are going to be driving the action, but not always. This simply captures the fact that while it is true that you know, actual players do seem to have kind of primary types and preferences that they have, uh, players are not totally consistent, and that is what the dice are supposed to capture, is that sometimes we act one way, sometimes we act another. So, so just sharing some of my thoughts about this. Now, I, I would do want to say that I have not actually used Solitary GM yet as a tool, uh, but as I'm just thinking about it, uh, one thing that stands out to me is that I think it's a really neat approach, specifically for games that require GMs having some significant knowledge of what's going on for it to work. Uh, so this is something that a GM emulator tends not to do as well, uh, because in a sense you only reveal the GM's mind a small piece at a time, right, through rolling on oracles and inspiration tables. So you really don't see the overarching plan until you construct it piece by piece. Now this allows you, though, to take on primarily the role of the GM, so then you can construct what the overarching plan is, and then the players learn that plan piece by piece. Right, so uh, this is, I think, perhaps a very good approach for things like if you want to solo something like a mystery or something along these lines. However, I think in terms of downsides, I would expect this to be a fairly slow process especially if you play with a somewhat full party. So if we think about kind of the traditional fantasy party, you'd typically have four different roles being fulfilled. Right? So you have the melee person, the range person, you have the healer, and you have the wizard. Right? So you have the four of them, and for every decision each of them makes, you're going to be first rolling a die, actually you're going to have to roll twice, uh, two dice to figure out how they're going to make the decision. Then you need to also think about, okay, based on the player type that you just rolled, what decision will they actually make? That has the potential to slow things down quite a bit, right? So, so I think like with many things, there are trade-offs involved. So, so that but that is the one kind of concern that I have thinking about this. At the same time, I like to try new tools. All right, so I'm hoping to try this out in a future series. Um, what I have in mind right now is maybe doing something like Monster of the Week. Right, so this is something that I think does benefit from having some GM planning uh, that is going to go on. So, so I can plan out what the mystery would be and then right, have the, the emulated players right, play through that game. Right, so I think, I think that's something that I would like to do, but I want to finish up the Mies Kinson's story first. Well, I think that that um, about wraps that up. So go ahead and check it out. Like I said, link below. And this is Profi signing off.